Okay, this is an update on the um, little camper I'm building. They call them teardrop campers. I built it because I thought it was cool and I just wanted to build the arch and just uh, just wanted to do it. Now I'm doing this one without plans and uh, trying to do it just like they did way back when when these things started getting built. Um, I've got my trailer. It's a lot of ums, huh? I got my trailer, and since the trailer, the uh, teardrop itself is only about seven feet long, I'm going to cut it off right here, all the way across, because I don't want this. I don't want this sticking out from behind the trailer, and I don't want to set the teardrop all the way at the back, because it'll put the door too close to the fender. And I like the look of the tire being a little bit closer to the rear of the unit. So, um, that's what I'm going to do. Y'all forgive me if I move too fast with the camera. A while ago, I, I videoed this. And when I played it back, I was kind of disappointed. It looked like it was filmed during a hearth, an earthquake. or Actually, it looked like one of those professional car commercials where they go, Oh, here's the car. Oh, look, here's the headlight. Now, shaky, shaky, shaky. And then look at the bright sunlight and all that anyway I'm gonna try to go a little bit slower so it, it's a little bit more uh, pleasant to look at there's the uh, galley with the I've got my AC set where I wanted it I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay there I got my little butyl tape here that um, I used when I installed the uh, hurricane hinge as you can see right here butyl tape on the top and then on this part of the hands butyl tape there and then butyl tape down here and then you can see where the butyl tape squeezed out a little bit which is fine I'll clean that up a little bit more but you can't really jack with it too much and then there's a strip that covers the screws so you don't have to look at the screws which I'm not worried about what they look like you can see my uh, fantastic roof vent fan it's not a fantastic fan it's a fantastic roof vent fan be sure and note the difference if you're ordering one um, I plan on painting this one so everywhere there were screw holes I just filled them with Bondo um, and um, after I got things smoothed out I put a couple of layers of uh, gel uh, not gel coat but fiberglass resin I'm going to have my lower edge has a nice uh, curve to it But I just, it looks white and dusty because I sanded off the pointy peaks, you know, the rough edges on there. So it won't be rough to the touch. I'm not going to make it perfect. I just installed my uh, screen door handle, which has a lock on it. Um, I'm going to close the garage door to stop some of that harsh glare. Um, got, got my lock here. Came with two keys. It's uh, you know, has your little locking mechanism here, where you can lock it. And if it's locked on the inside, you push, push that back down and unlock it. Uh, just got through installing the windows. I routed, cut these out with a router, and then left a nice little ledge so that I have something to set on when I set the glass. I um, tinted the windows because I want to. I know I just don't like harsh glares. And then uh, my little porch light had, I mean, good lord, man, it had so many LEDs in there. It was just really, really bright. So I'm going to turn it on. Here comes the bright light, y'all. Um, I put a piece of this window film in there to mute it because even though it's bright right now, it was really harshly bright. That would be awesome for a backup light on a truck or something. There's the front. Um, you know. I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much. I'm trying to be really smooth by moving around and, and not shaking it up. Uh, right at that window, they're 14 and 3 16 inch across on the width. Um, you know, and I tell you what, I'm so glad I built this thing on a cradle because I can move it this way and move it that way and jiggle it just a little bit. And if I built it on the trailer, I could just see the amount of hassle I'd have to go through. Okay, so on the doors, um, on the door, 
I just use the regular cabinet hinges. I was kind of try to use the uh, hidden ones where you don't see the screws. But what I'm going to do is, I will. Um, these screws I'm just are temporary for right now. I have some Torx head screws that I'm going to replace and put Torx heads on there. So with the Torx head screws and a little lock there, to give you, you know, a little bit of security. So if you want to leave your wallet or your pistol in there while you're out wading in the water, a little bit more security than being in a tent. Uh, for my door, the way I built the gasket, as you can see the double thickness of the door, basically this is the door cut out and I sanded it and smoothed it and then I put a larger door cut out, just this part right here you can see. Um, and this is screwed to that piece, as you can see all the screws. And um, I ran out of gasket material. but. So what I have here is I have the outer gasket to stop the rain and if the rain gets in there of course it's going to fall around like this and go down to here. So I put this gasket here to make a kind of a trench so that this water will continue to run. You can see where I need to pick up with my gasket again and fill it, finish it up. Then at the bottom you can see I left a little bit of a gap there. So if I do get some rain in there it will have a place to drip out. Let's step inside the coach, as they call it. Okay. So, here's the lock. Lock the door. Um, this, I just had this on temporarily for a, for a set in the gasket. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you can leave it on there and double as a security lock, but it's coming off. I just, like I said, I put that on there to wear the gasket down a little bit. Um, you can see the window tent. You can see right, the, right out there to the mango tree on the other side of the pool. Um, let's see. So I covered the lock. And I have this. 5000 BTU AC unit. Just turned it on a few minutes ago. So, what do we got here? Uh, in 10 minutes, it's dropped it down from 100 degrees to about 72. So, I'd imagine within an hour or less, it'd be already 60. So, I've got on my lights, I bought these ones with the uh, with a dimmer on it. So I don't have to pay separate for a dimmer. As we all know, LEDs are sometimes partially bright. Ooh, the camera's fogging up from the cold air. Um, and then, well that's the LED light. Here's the uh, fantastic roof vent fan. We all know how those work. Just open it up and uh, turn on. You can use it during the winter time and leave the AC behind for extra square footage and put the screen over the screen over the hole that the window unit is in. And if you wanted to, you can reverse the polarity on these vents to blow in on you. That would be real nice during the winter time. Ooh, hope this is not going to be a jerky ass video. And then it got a little bit of a 110 right there. Let's turn this up a little brighter. And there's a little night light on it. I'm not finished on the inside. There were some imperfections I didn't like about the inside. Plus it a little bit rough. So I'm gonna put one more coat of polyurethane on this on the inside. Uh, and then I'll hit it with like a 220 grit just to knock it off. So you can see where I pick up the dust here and I touch here, it just sticks. That rough part just picks the dust right up. So once I get done sanding it with the 220 and clean it and then um, I will go back and put a really super thin coat with a really high-end brush. I'm using the white channel bristle brushes. And you can see here and there where there's been some, uh, you know, making some improvements. I guess that would be what you call the front. Uh, I may put a shelf in at the top. There's just not a lot of 
just not a lot of room for a shelf but we'll see I wanted to keep it simple and keep it real light I mean I could pull it with my truck I could put my wife's vehicle is rated for a 5,000 pound uh, trailer so it's the weight for pulling is not the big deal the big deal is once we get this finished it will go in the backyard behind the garage and to get it back there you have to push it through the gate roll it past the swimming pool and then get it up on its little concrete pad so you can see the window tent and then you can see we're on the edges there I kind of you know I didn't really have a good tool to cut that with normally when I do when I tint some windows I'll have a straight edge but I'm doing square windows or rectangle windows I've never tinted around window before so that knocks out a lot of the harshness of the early morning, early morning sunshine and plus just cool it off quicker so um, I guess that's about it I, um, there's my LED down low let's see if we can get it really super low yeah super super low if you're way out in the woods dark dark woods somewhere that's gonna um, that's gonna be pretty awesome because you don't always want to you know oh my god bright when it's night time so that's it for the uh, update on the teardrop hope this helps somebody with their build and believe me this is a simple simple thing so far I have about 25 hours invest 25 26 hours I have to look it up but I have uh, been writing it down as I go and these are so easy I just can't understand why some companies are getting eight and thousand eight thousand dollars and sixteen thousand dollars for these things I mean granted mine is not that quality but everything's square you can see I got top tolerances on um, my gaps and my rail windows aren't kind of you know they're not glitchy looking and, oh, my head how about that and if you look it, right here where my my underlayment is you know that which is my roof meets the sidewall if you look at that there is um, you know it's not you see a lot of them they're just kind of up and down wavy and bumpy looking as hell and this is not filled with bondo this so you can see it's where wood meets wood I mean, that's the kind of stuff I want to see when I'm looking at videos of other people's trailers or teardrops and I want to see how they made the gaskets I want to see how they did the doors I want to see how they put the hinges on these hinges are not my first choice but the ones that I wanted where all you see is this hinge sticking out and a pin that you can't knock out well they were for a door with only a half inch overlay and I've got a full inch overlay so I couldn't use them and I wasn't about to cut into my door because with a four, full four inch overlay I was going to have to recess and cut into my door right here I'm just not going to cut that because I don't want to cut it so I just use these and like I said, I got the torque screws. I'll replace these with torque screws after I paint it. And at the, this point, we think we're going to paint it like a Texas flag. And then this part right here, over all the way over the trunks, is just going to be a bright white. Um, like I said, I'm leaving the orange peel on here. Let's see if I can get a little close up. I'm leaving the orange peel like that. So. Uh, as time goes by and we scratch it and nick it and bump it, it won't show up so much. Um, I did smooth it out a little bit more around the windows, you know, so it looks like looks like people have been looking in the windows and touching it and rubbing it down over the years. I want it to look a little bit old. Here we go with a quick spin around here. And then I, I got it slick around the door handle so it looks like it has a lot of wear. Um, and I'll probably hand paint a logo on here you know like a fake business or something of the 30s and I'll hit it with sandpaper and make it look like it's just worn down to where you know it's truly old but uh, this is June 2018 so
so this is not an old trailer again we all knew that but I'm gonna try to make it look old let's see so I set this down so this can shut the front part of it and the galley AC working and that's what it looks like with the galley shut I'll open the garage door get a little sunshine on it there it comes not bad 25 hours at this point I figured another three hours to paint or I'll say four hours. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty quick at it. I can get a nice furniture grade finish on there. I'm not going to do an automotive grade finish. Let's step up here and take a look at the hurricane hinge. Seems like nobody ever shows their hurricane hinge on their videos. And there's the old roof vent. Here goes the door um but that's it in a nutshell right there i wanted to use a different doorknob but i thought that that was more fitting for this little hobby trailer um i uh don't have much else to say about it but as i when i once i get closer to the end i'll i'll get you a new video and if you have any questions ask me if uh i don't look at my youtube account every day but um, when I do, I'll try to answer the questions because I had a lot of questions on this as again, I was doing it without plans. You don't need plans. You just uh, sit down and start. I, I, I laid down this piece of plywood with the sides. I laid it down and drew it out. Took me a pencil and a pocket full of erasers and I kept drawing it until I got a shape that looked pleasing to me. And then I cut it out. And, Took a belt sander and smoothed it. Got me some nice round edges. You can see the extension cord I got going in there for their air conditioners. Kind of got this cocked up a little bit, but I, I'm pretty pretty pleased with my uh, you know finish on my edges. So there we go. Sweet deal. Thanks for taking a look.